some people back home in India know me as a pest. I mean, I, I just go on pestering them till they say yes. So, or no sometimes, you know, they just say, get the hell, hell out of here. Changing strategy, he arrived in Europe on borrowed money, hoping that his inexhaustible pestering would finally begin to work. The West has always claimed to have discovered India, as if the place were an oil scene or a mathematical theorem. But it hasn't often been possible for Indians to return the compliment and do the discovering. And that's one of the things the story of Akumal and Chapinsky is really about. Because in it, East discovers West. And as a result, it's the Western tradition that has been enriched. To say nothing of Akumal and Chapinsky. At the Tate Gallery, very few people arrive unannounced and demand to see the boss. Have you got an appointment? No, I don't. Um, can you tell me what it's about? Uh, well, uh, I think I've stumbled onto a great discovery. It's, uh, it's an American abstract expression. It's a contemporary of Pollock and de Kooning. I met his uh, son at a party in Chicago, and uh, then we became friends, and then uh, he said he'd like to... Remarkably, Akumal broke through. He was seen by the keeper of the Tate's modern collection, Ronald Alley. Akumal, talking unstoppably, was taken to a room where at long last he would be able to open the magic box, the box containing the Shapinsky slides. I have the slides in my bag. Yes, you know, so. Very beautiful color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, a, it's very interesting, mm -hmm. very beautiful landscape. Yes, this is much looser. The slides were obviously having the right effect. Ronald Alley took two hours to examine them, and his seal of approval was to be the crucial factor. I can only assume that the reason why uh, he is unknown is that uh, nobody has seen the stuff. But I'd have thought that uh, it shouldn't be at all difficult to find a dealer to show his work. In I'm London, amazed please. that he's not known. Uh, Are you yes, into a gallery in London? Yes, yes, yes. yes because I, do, uh, I don't know the scene here, and I'd be very grateful if you can put me in touch with someone. Work uh, gladly. Ronald Alley recommended James Mayer of London's Mayer Gallery. For the first time since he began working on Shapinsky's behalf, Akumal had stopped being an outsider. He was now that most pakka of persons, a man who had been properly introduced. Uh, Mr. Ali of the Tate uh, saw them and liked them very much, and uh, he said that uh, this gallery would be very apt. I was told that uh, you're the best person here, so... Now, I'm very thrilled that Mr. Ali suggested coming to here because just looking at these photographs at this moment is very extraordinary. Now, you say that he hasn't shown since 1951. Yes, and that he was just the had Kutz one, one uh, exhibition of the Kutz Gallery and after that he just disappeared. James Mayer quickly agreed to hold Shapinsky's first ever one-man exhibition. The miracle had been worked. London had recognized what the New York art market had for so long ignored. A great illusion of $34,000, right side of 34000 Yes, 34,000, it's number 87. Lot number nine. And $25,000 is bid here now, 25, 26,000. At $26,000, it's my bid here now, 26,000, 27,000. This multi-million dollar art market isn't quite the same place as the art world. The latter contains a few artists, after all. However, New York did recognize abstract expressionism well before Europe and maybe a part of the European celebration of Shapinsky is because of the pleasure of being first for a change. Here, last November, a de Kooning was sold for almost $2 million. Harold Shapinsky couldn't have sold a picture for two hundred. At $44,000, was on the phone left at $44,000. 51, and two here. At $52,000, the fair warning at $52,000. Sold for $52,000. <laughs> oh, 
was eating the ice? No, he thought it would stink. Oh. Shapinsky's work will probably soon be commanding high prices. But one must fear that for Harold and Kate, with their love of simplicity, the price could be even higher. <laughs> They've never really needed an awful lot to be happy. And that was, I guess, the secret, and still is. Next day, James Mayer visits to make his selection for the Shapinsky show. You can get more out of black than almost any other. I feel in the exhibition, it's very important we have a group of the, the black and white as well as the colored ones, because I feel that, you know, the black and white is particularly important to your work. Now, taking this format, this from basically starting in, what, 1949, I chose this group, which I've got in some form of order. The Mayer Gallery has held exhibitions by many of the most important modern American artists. Motherwell, Liechtenstein, Warhol. Shapinsky's show at the Mayer Gallery is a way of saying that he is of their company. It's being said a little late in the day, but it is, at least, being said. Because this, there's a, such a terribly strong theme going through all of them, and it, it seems fascinating that you know that that's 47, 1960, 62, and then 1970, mm -hmm. the whole thing. And all the ones on this almost size and square format seem to me to come out with the same imagery. Mm -hmm. All great art is like the memory. Harold Shapinsky's family were Russian Jews from Brooklyn. He grew up during the Depression. It was a time of strong neighborhood spirit. He has preserved that commitment to community activities all his life. And now, his own artistic community is prominent in his plans for the future. If we make a great deal of money out of this, if that happens, and that isn't the terribly important thing, but we've talked about that, I would love to set up a fund for young struggling artists. And uh, so I understand only too well what the struggle is for young artists, and it's even more difficult today. But there are things that Harold wants for himself as well. Money will buy him time to paint without worrying about money. It'll buy him materials, especially the big canvases he's practically never been able to afford. And it'll get him a big studio where he can stop falling over his old pictures every time he takes a step back. If he has any left to fall over by then. Well, we're nearly there. It's just one more and then... Then we have you. We then go. we're on to you. The opening date of the Shapinsky exhibition is rapidly approaching, and the paintings have arrived in London to be framed. Yes, we are. James Mayer has chosen just 22 pictures for this show. 
22 pictures distilled from a lifetime's work. By the way, if you've ever bought a picture because of its frame, don't be ashamed. As you can see, the experts think the frame is as important as the picture too. Here, for example, we see a masterpiece by Giorgio de Chirico pulled out of a rack, just to see if the frame will suit the colouring of a Shapinsky. Then, irresistible, isn't it? When I, when I told Motherwell that, he said, oh, that means you must not Harold Shapinsky's 60th birthday party is a little unlike the other 59. There are about 200 guests. The Shapinskys probably know about six of them. Well, although actually this is the ambassador to Germany. It's like you're dazed by the whole And again, another Dutchman, Alexander von Gravenstein, said, Akumal, you have James Mayer with you. Go back to India and relax. Akumal's work is complete. The paintings have reached the public. We hope you don't blow all your money in one day. Now, Ronald Alley's enthusiasm is confirmed by others. The first reactions are excellent. Shapinsky is an extremely good and original abstract expressionist, writes the London Times art critic. His forms have an extraordinary interior energy. So it is a happy birthday, after all.